Hey, welcome everyone. My name is Charlie Solis. This is my Tesla turbine steam electric generator. There's a Tesla turbine inside that vacuum chamber. Um, if you're like me, you have electricity, just about most of us do, and that's getting expensive. And I imagine you don't want to pay for it just as much as I don't want to pay for it. And this system is going to hopefully going to help us get to a cost-free electricity system. You might ask how we're going to do that. Uh, so a lot of people have access to solar um, collectors. You don't, not PV, but solar thermal collectors are pretty simple. You can either do mirrors or you can do just black sheet or rubber mats. There's a lot of different ways you can do it. There's other things like geothermal and a lot of people also have biomass, like yard clippings, yard trimmings, all your annual leaves that fall every year. That can be used to produce heat. It's all carbon neutral to power the boiler and drive the turbine. And you just then need a condenser and a cooling tower, which I'm using a Tesla fountain as the cooling tower for cooling the condenser. And it'll dump all that heat into the air. How the system works is a basic steam ranking cycle as you put in energy and it makes steam. Energy first goes to latent heat of vaporization that then goes to making or pressurizing the steam. You then exhaust that steam into a superheater and that superheater goes straight directly to the turbine. Through the turbine, the steam expands, goes into the vacuum chamber and then through these pipes, goes into the condenser. The condenser's got cooling water that circulates through it and that's going to remove the latent heat of condensation. Then the Latent heat of condensation is dumped into the air by the Tesla fountain, which will then be used for heating into my workshop right now. So for the boiler, I have three 1500 watt electric water heaters in there. Um, right now I'm doing it electric so that we have a known value of a thermal input. So then I can then compare that to uh, the electrical output of the turbine. When we do switch this over to some renewable energy like uh, geothermal, solar, biomass. The heating coils could just be removed for a heat exchanger <coughs> that circulates the hot fluid through your hot thermal storage. Uh, there is another way to do this where you just use a big thermal mass and all your heat from your, the sun during the day gets stored into a thermal mass, whether it be water or rocks, sand. The higher the temperature you want to go with that thermal storage, the different material you have to use. There are different mechanical issues with expansion and contraction when you go up into higher temperatures, but that's a whole other discussion. But you get a thermal mass, it stores heat, and you then get your you get a heating coil that goes in there, and that's your boiler, and that just replaces this electric boiler here. The shell of the superheater is just a steam header in the boiler, so when you open the throttle, that will uh, depressurize gas into the superheater. So the, the pressure of the steam in the superheater tubes will always be lower than in the boiler that's the shell. So the temperature in the shell will always be higher than the boiling point in the tubes. It's not a really good heat exchange, but it'll, it's better than nothing. I was having an issue with that flooding right before the turbine and sending a ton of uh, water slugs into the system and I was really worried about damaging something it's not even that it was just moisture and it was like it was a really bad water hammer that was forming hasn't been an issue but I got this to spin up a little while the other day okay I'm gonna give you a little test I got the pressures a little bit high so the temperature is much higher than what I want to go into the turbine so I'm gonna have to bring this pressure down Woo! nice little water jet going there first cool now we're America. <laughs> Woo! I only have two of these heater coils on right at this moment, too. That's definitely higher than it should be because it's, it's, I didn't adjust it as it got warmer. Oh, you know, also now means there's not a bunch of stored energy in that the water that I wouldn't be accounting for going into the turbine. But everything's set up. Let's start it spinning first. All right.
Is it gonna go? Yeah, there it goes. Can y'all hear that? No, it's slowing down. Oh no. Well, that was a fail. Uh, okay, it's like, that wasn't really what's gonna happen. Uh, I didn't pull the vacuum on the condenser. So, now, this is the real test. We got a full, almost deep vacuum. Go Von Deepa. Go Von Deepa. I wanted to go closer, but I need to make the stuff in the system seal up a little better. But for now, it's gonna hold for long enough for us to do a little spin test. Here we go now. Can you hear that? That's cruising right now. And it's accelerating. Yes! It's accelerating. This that's power. Take a look at the boiler down here. See how she's pumping. Oh no, we are getting close to the you getting you can see the water is getting low. Wow, that is awesome. Vacuum's slowly going down. Go find deeper, Dylan! I don't have the cooling water going to it. Yeah, that's sustained too. Hell yeah. Okay. Let's pull her back. But look how much water that was already taken out of there. That thing was at least up to here just for that one run. Wow. There's probably a lot of moisture went with it. I really hope you guys can hear this. That sounds awesome. It's quiet. If you're not familiar exactly with the turbine I'm talking about, I can't open it right now. It would be difficult, but I have a couple videos. You might find one up here in the corner. If not, at the end screens, or hopefully one suggested in down below. But yeah, this is a, that is, that's sustainable power right there. Especially because I have the two gears and there's two generators. Each generator has iron losses and armatures. So if we went with a coreless axial flux direct on shaft generator, all of the losses from the gears and the generators would be available for power out. I've got six bearings on the turbine itself on top of the two other bearings per generator. So we got 10 bearings in there. We switch over to the direct shaft. You only got the shaft. You only got the bearings in the generator. So you get up to two, losing like six to eight bearings out of there. That's the power available. <laughs> Again, the turbine's not even designed well. The casing needs so much work. There's about an eighth of an inch of spacing on either side of the uh, turbine end plates between the casing wall and the end plates. That, that's wide. That is really wide. <laughs> um, there's no labyrinth seals or any sort of gland packing in there. Like, there's so many places. This thing can be made better for a higher isentropic efficiency besides all of the inefficiencies I have in there. And just for the record, by the way, that's torque because those generate the turbine is geared up to the generators, not down. Like everyone claims you have to gear the turbine down, the Tesla turbine down because oh, it spins too fast and it gets low torque. That's not true. Complete myth. This is the turbine geared up at a 3.0666 to one ratio, meaning the generators spin 3.0666 times the speed of or the RPM of the motor of the turbine. Not like everyone else says, you got to take it down because it goes too fast. It doesn't get enough torque. It gets plenty of torque. Don't listen to people when they say that. There's, I have proof. I've got compressed air tests, dynos that show six foot pounds of torque at 4,150 RPM. <laughs> People saying it doesn't have torque. 
That's what piston engines, a 125cc piston engine gets about 8 foot-pounds of torque. That, that, that's, that's high torque at low RPM. Yeah, so like we were saying before, I'm sure you have electricity that you pay for and you don't want to pay for it. And electricity is getting expensive if you know what's going on with Ukraine and Russia and prices for fuel and energy. That's that. Let's not get into that, but let's all just agree we don't want this to keep going on and we want to things to change. And this system is a way for us to be able to utilize solar, geothermal, biomass, waste... Even just waste heat that's being used in fossil industries is being dumped out. That stuff can be used. But Tesla turbine, cryophorus, vacuum steam, cold steam, there's a bunch of names for it. Uh, if you're not familiar with ocean thermal energy conversion systems, they use the exact same vacuum steam. A lot of them use an organic ranking cycle, which means you just change out the, uh, the motive fluid. And so instead of steam, you use some refrigerant which means you can get higher pressures at a lower temperature, which means a higher efficiency in your turbine and yada, yada. But I don't think we're going to need to do that because we've, we've got this, this covered. I think we are coming in hot, hot to trot. Cause that, that, that spun, I don't know what RPM that was. Cause I don't have it set up. Cause I need to do an electrical feed through. If you know of a place that's a cheap electrical feed through into a vacuum chamber that's sealed, Please let me know in the comments down below. I have been scouring the internet to find something that's not an inordinate price. Cost more than the whole boiler or whatever. Like, it's, it's crazy, these parts that you have to find just to get some of this stuff. All right. So I have now found the first breaking point so far in what I've designed. And I kind of expect this because these things are really tight in there, but... The flange split open here. Didn't on this side, but you can see some fracture points where it wants to. And then the other two both broke there. So whatever we were getting on the power or the acceleration, that was while these things were probably venting out a bunch. Yeah, it was probably losing a ton just out of the nozzle. <laughs> 